Islam came to all these parts through the agency of traders, especially across the Sahara. So neighbors from across the Sahara uh, of today's North Africa brought Islam and they brought along with it Islamic knowledge. Now, as I was saying, the Bangaya system deteriorated to the situation it is today. When you say Sangaya, it means exclusion. It means remoteness. It means going out of town. So when you start seeing uh, young al in the city, there is a problem because the city has distractions. And that was what exactly the Sangaya system sought to avoid. That is why they would go to a village, they would live in a village. In fact, even in the village, they would go outside the village and live on a farm not to be abandoned as it is now on the street under the elements and suffering from neglect. Now, if somebody is neglected, you don't expect that person to grow with compassion and pity and mercy in their mind because they don't know it. Nobody has taught them. Wallahi, the Lahel Azim, one yard on that a she babby didn't sorrow, bars, bah, my happy, one does it, little and sang yay. Masanaka checker as we are, you and Abu. Was there you, but Unsakatasha had a coursing girma, bas jigan, yes, bas jigan al Umaba. I like Zang, 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 Allah. Islam is not a new religion, but the culmination and fulfillment of the same basic truth that God revealed through all his prophets and messengers to every people, starting with Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and Jesus. Peace be upon them. Islam is a way of life symbolized by peace. Peace with God, peace with oneself, and peace with the creations of God through submission to God and commitment to his guidance. It tells us the purpose of our creation, our final destiny, and our place among other creatures. It educates us on the best way to conduct our social, political, economic, educational, moral, and spiritual affairs. Within a few decades, after the death of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the territory under Muslim rule had extended onto the three continents of Asia, Africa, and Europe. Among the reasons for the rapid and peaceful spread of Islam was the simplicity of its doctrine. Islam calls for faith in only one God worthy of worship. Islam also repeatedly instructs humans to use their powers of intelligence and observation to differentiate between truth from falsehood. Scholars of Islamic education excelled in art, science, technology, architecture, astronomy, geography, history, language, literature, medicine, mathematics, physics, horticulture, commerce, and a host of other fields of studies. Many crucial systems such as algebra, the Arabic numerals, and the very concept of the zero, vital to the advancement of mathematics and computers, were transmitted through Islamic scholars. Most Muslim scientists and thinkers were multidisciplinary and produced remarkable works in many fields. One of the most famous scholars that contributed a lot in the development of scholarship is Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Karim al Magili. He was in Kano during the reign of Sir King Kano Muhammad Ramfa. He was a great Maliki jurist and political theorist. Another famous scholar, Muhammad bin Ahmad, born in 1469 and died in 1529, also was in Kano and other parts of Hausalan, Kazina, Daura, Burning Kebi, Sokoto, and Damagaram. He was an author and contemporary of Al Magili. He was given Ijaza certificate to teach by some scholars in Egypt and Hijaz, and he wrote commentary on the Muktasar, who became the Qadi of Kazina. Another Maliki jurist who resided in Kano during the Bagaudawa, the first dynasty of Kano, was Maklut al Bilbali. Apart from his knowledge of fiqh, he was al Muhadith, scholar of prophetic traditions. He had memorized the Sahih al Bukhari, 
Some of his judgments and legal views have been documented. In a few decades, Arabic, the language of the Holy Quran and Islam, became inseparable. It became a leading world language and the intellectual medium which united most of the civilized world. Soon, Arabic calligraphy began to be adopted by the languages of the people who had been converted to Islam like Hausa, Kanuri, Fulbe, and Tigri in northern Nigeria and some parts of Niger and Mali. It is from these intellectuals that the language policy of Ajami emerged to express indigenous thoughts. Consequently, the most significant Islamic educational reform brought about by Muhammad Ramfa in Kano was in the adaptation in the Arabic calligraphy for an indigenized house script, the Ajami. This methodology became more or less adopted gradually throughout Muslim northern Nigeria. A boarding pupil or one within easy reach of the school may continue with his studies after graduation with the aim of becoming a malam. This system, created in Rumfa's reign in the 15th century and modified along the centuries, persists to date and provides the primary contact of the Hausa, Kanuri, and Fulbe learners with a formalized literary curriculum. The literacy base became empowered with the increasing trade and religious contact between the Hausa and, on the other hand, the Arab traders and Islamic scholars. This led to an enriched house of vocabulary such that two-fifths of house words from 1750 to 1960 are directly Arabian in origin. This system sustained itself effectively throughout the Muslim northern Nigeria right through to the Islamic and intellectual jihad reforms of Sheikh Usman Amfodio, his brother Abdullah Higwandu, and his son Muhammad Bello which started in 1804 and ended with the coming of the British colonialism. Between them, they produced over 300 works in prose and verse, as well as dozens of occasional poems. In addition to writing in Arabic, Sheikh Uthman also wrote poetry in full full day, some of which was translated into Hausa by his son, Isa. His daughter, Nana Asmao, was also a poet in both Arabic and full full day. The reformist wrote in most of the Islamic disciplines, jurisprudence, theology, Sufism, Quranic exegesis, prophetic traditions, Arabic language, manners, medicine, history, stage drama, and so on. In fact, their written works cross these disciplinary boundaries. Thus, before the end of the 20th century, an intellectual and scholarly tradition based on Islam existed among the Muslims of northern Nigeria.